Well, today we have a, have a fun kind of a program for you. Fun for me, I think, more than for you because um, instead of me giving the facts and figures, you're going to be giving the facts and figures, and it's your chance to shine as the audience and to come up with all the answers and all the information and all the history on Belmont that, uh, that you already know, and a big chance to showcase that. So that's sort of the, the, the premise of the, the mystery photo contest. So just to say a little bit about this, the mystery photo contest was something that was run by the Belmont Citizen newspaper, and for many years, it was they had a photo of the week. And I think uh, our records, we have some from 1981, around that era it started. And it lasted all the way up until about 1993. So quite a run in the newspaper of these mystery photos. And, the, and it would be published each week. And then you would clip out the little coupon, remember that, and mail it in to the office on Capella Row, the, the Cushing Square. Uh, Cushing Square is where the Belmont Citizen was headquartered at the time. And they would actually publish all the correct answers. So if you sent in a correct answer, your name would be published in the paper with the following week with the new photo. So it was kind of a, a fun way to get people noticing their surroundings around town and promoting the history of the Belmont. So the former historian Richard Betts, many of you know, uh, of course, was uh, you know a ringer in the competition, shall we say, and and probably knew uh, all the answers. But uh, what he would do instead of just sending in a, a you know a, a short description, he would research the history of whatever the object or the landmark or whatever was going on, and he would write like a full paragraph describing uh, in detail some of what you were looking at or thinking about or seeing. So it was kind of a fun way to promote the history as well as just the photography. So it be became really pretty special. And he, uh, he donated to the society a whole collection of scrapbooks, which he, he began to compile over 70 years. And one of the, one of the little subsets of those scrapbooks was a mystery photo contest. So we actually have some bound volumes of the original pictures from the newspaper and the clippings, and we have those in a, a scrapbook collection, which makes it kind of fun. So um, maybe it was last year at the annual meeting, we used those photographs, and we had a little competition amongst the members, and it was kind of a fun way to feature some of those um, photos. Now today, I think you'll have a big advantage because the photos in color, I think it will give you a, a little bit more to go on as far as background or context or whatever. So let's see what happens as we go along. But everybody should have a pencil and a piece of paper here. And we'll start off by taking a look at some of these, some of these images. So everyone got the flyer, which came out. And you see, you see the difference, what I'm talking about, between the black and white images and the color, how much more it pops and how much more detail almost your eye wants to see as it looks at that. So that's what we're looking at here is inviting you all to see these kinds of mystery photos. So number one here, why don't we just jump right in. And so this is what the kind of thing you're going to expect to see, photos that are around town, that you should be able to see in your wanderings, comings and goings, but maybe I've uh, cropped them a little differently or, or uh, uh, did, done some a little bit of editing on them. And, and so you're going to have to determine the location or what you're looking at here. So instead of just shouting out the answers, I'll give you a chance to look at it, maybe write a little note to see what you think it is, and then we can talk about it as a group, and you can raise your hand, and, and we'll all have a chance to answer some of these. So this is the number one, and this is, a, this is uh, today I could, I could go to this location. I'd be looking at this exact. Uh, any, any, um, any, we, need, we need more time to take a look, or you want, you want to make some guesses here? Who's, who's, who's familiar with the number one mystery photo? No one. I got a lot of blank stares. No one. Oh, yes. Could it be? Uh, I don't know if the name is Taffy or the new bakery down in Waverly Square. Good, good guess because 
This is in Waverly. This is in Waverly. There you go. OK. So there we have a winner. So this scene right here is uh, on, uh, of course, it's right outside, right as you enter into Star Market on Trapello Road. And you walk back past a little seating arrangement right by the doorway. And of course, you see the table set up there going into the entrance to Star Market. Exactly. So there's, so wow. So we get, we get somebody that's got a good eye for local landscape. So let's keep going. Star Market was formerly, as we remember, Edgar's, which was a long time floral and, and, and greenhouse business in that section of town and a very prominent. Uh, and uh, at one time, they had about nine greenhouses and conservatory and flower. Anyone remember Edgar's? Yeah, lots of you. And then uh, and negotiations to build a supermarket started to take place around the mid-1980s. And since then, we know it as, as a star market. But that's uh, good. So we had a winner on the first one. All right, this is a, another, ah, uh, uh, yeah. See what you think. So here we're looking at a. Again, I could walk walk by this location today, and it, you you would see this very visible. I can see it from a, from from the street area, and uh, when I give you some I give you some hints, unless somebody has a immediate idea of what they're looking at here, mystery photos. Okay, it's along Concord Avenue. Not the library. No, it's not the public library. And I bet you all of you have been to this location, you know, regularly. OK. Post office. This right here is on the sidewalk as you walk down to get into the door of the post office. This little bird bath is prominently displayed in the ground right along the uh, right along Concord Avenue. So when you when you pull up and park there and get out of your car, take a look and you'll be looking at the bird bath from along Concord Avenue. Okay, another another little now these have these have been cropping up all over town. Uh, these they call them the little the little library I think, and they're at different locations. You see these little uh, sort of lending libraries for books, and so this one um, again is on is not on some it's it's on pretty much of a major thoroughfare. I tried to pick one that that might be a little bit more familiar as you would pass by more regularly. Anyone have any idea where this uh, location is? If you live in this neighborhood, you probably right away would recognize it. Who lives in the Belmont Park area? Belmont Park, which is the area up on School Street near the Wellington School. Does that sound familiar up in that area? This is on School Street, correct. This is up uh, across from 93 School Street. And this is in the front yard of the house there. It's a nice, beautiful, restored Victorian-style home on School Street, so a few doors down from the Wellington School, probably. So that's what, that would be a good landmark if you kept going towards the Burbank School. So if you left the Wellington and went towards the Burbank School along School Street, this little lending library would be popped up in one of the front yards along the neighborhood there. OK. so. Well, I have to say that you're not doing as bad as you think because the people in the contest had a week to figure it out and send in their answer. And I'm only giving you a few, a, a few minutes, so it's a little bit more challenging. But this is a mystery photo kind of thing that, that would have been probably you know, featured in that, that kind of mystery photo contest, some kind of thing like this. All right, let's take a look. Now, this one. It's numbered, so that gives, a, that gives a context of a street address, if that's helpful to anyone. And my, uh, this, this appeared at this address only, it's only been there maybe, maybe six months or a year. I don't, this wasn't a long time landmark like some of the others are. Anyone recognize where this would be? 
I heard it. I heard somebody say it. Library. Library. Yes, the Belmont Memorial Library. You see, this is a big granite wall in front of the building. When you walk up the steps and you're going in the front door, they put this rock there. It was all painted 336. And I think, although I'm not sure, um, I know that the, the library had several fire inspections at, uh, in October, probably fire month or something. And after that, this rock, and it probably is, maybe the chief would know, that you have to have a visible street address on your building, or you're supposed to have a visible street address. And I think maybe this derived from that, that maybe after that time, they put this outside so you can see that from the street. But you could easily walk by this location at any time. So, so the Memorial Library, 30, 336 Concord Avenue, is where that mystery photo comes from. So OK, let's take a look at our next uh, series. This is, a, this is a twofer. And as you remember, these boxes are very visible around town as well. And these are traffic control signal boxes. And they've been all uh, redone and re repainted under a program that was taken on by the Belmont Council of Art and a Belmont, uh, several count, Council of Art and have, have done these kinds of um, boxes here. Anyone re recognize these locations? Okay, I see a couple. Is that like Trapello Road outside of um, Dunkin' Trapello Road, this one, yeah. yes, but not Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, first one, the bird, well, let's, let's finish the bird one. This one is outside of Bank of America, Waverly Square. So not Waverly Square, and it's along Trapello Road, so that was correct, but not outside the Dunkin' Donuts. But around. The second one, yes, it's a corner of Cross Street and Brighton Street. So right down by the... Um, the school, right, right, like almost at that corner, the crossing, very, very uh, heavy, heavily traveled intersection. That box appears in that that location. Okay, another, another one you have to put on your thinking cap for, and this also is is relatively new. This isn't an old historic uh, location, but um, very prominent where it stands. Anyone have any guesses? Is it's, it's very similar to the ones that are along the Waverly Trail. Exactly. That kind of a kiosk. Duck Pond. Duck Pond, those kinds of overhangs. Yes, there's several of them around town. This one is even newer than that. Is that fire, fire department? Old fire department. Old fire department. No, no. We're, 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 there we go. Now we've got it. You know exactly in Clay Pit Pond? It's near the Yes. If you go to, to Clay Pit Pond when they, when they completed the new high school down that area, there's a pathway that, that wraps around there where the new um, Veterans Memorial is and down in that area, down by Hittinger Street and Underwood Street. There's a kiosk, and I think that this was constructed by Boys and Girls Scouts or Boys and Girls Clubs, members of those clubs, and with donated materials and supplies. So you're looking at an information kiosk. So again, rather new because the high school is sort of uh, sprung up more recently. But there you go, a mystery photo is a kiosk down in that area of town. OK, this one may be more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a lot of you, a lot of you recognize this. It looks like, so, Plymouth Church, Plymouth Congregational Church, and that's along Pleasant Street. And uh, I don't know if it's still up, but several times during the year, they they tend to pull out these painted doors and put some kind of message or welcoming sign on them. And so that's just a, a little bit of a cropped uh, image of several of the doors that stand out there by the church. So good. And this one, okay. Okay, yeah. Easy. That's an easy one. So it looks like everybody recognizes this plaque, and you probably remember Clark Kendall. 
and the long time uh, business that stood there for many years, Volkswagen, and now this bronze plaque is actually affixed to the building that is now CVS, which was repla you know, replaced his, his auto shop in that area. So next time you go in CVS down in the Waverly area, take a look on the building there and you'll see a plaque to the Kendall family until Clark Kendall. So in the Volkswagen dealership. So there's another. Okay, here's another uh, interesting. There you go. Everybody recognize that now? Can you describe it a little better? Yeah, yeah. So he's saying that if you're leaving the center and you're going up the hill, and you're driving up the hill, you're coming out of Lancaster, you're going up Clifton Street, you know that there's water that runs along down on, on the street, open, um, like a little open brook. And, and the water just is always flowing along that area. And uh, one of the houses there has a little bit of a, a fencing and a, and, and a little stairway that you can actually go across the brook, a little bridge, no drawbridge, but a bridge that goes up into their house from the street. So if you walk up Clifton Street, you'll see one of the residences has built this little um, walkway over, the, over the, uh, the, the little brook that runs open brook on Clifton Street. Good eye, good eye. Are you living, you live in that neighborhood or? I used to walk to the you used, center. You used to walk to the center, yeah. So these are, like I said, most of these you probably walk by or see as you're coming and going, but you don't focus on them quite the same as what we're doing today. But there, there you go, there's a staircase. Okay, another one. Yeah, okay, everybody look at this one now. You, you, so, you know, for many years it was called the barn, the Strand Theater, the studio cinema. You all know what I'm talking about. Lots of you probably uh, went there as teenagers or high school kids or watching the five cent movies and, and uh, bringing a date or uh, whatever. And now that building is a, a church building, but the outside wall area uh, has several murals painted on it. So along Trapello Road, as you were describing, you see a quite a large, uh, large area wall mural. And this looks like, I'm not really sure what, if this was a, a former business that was over in the area, or, or but it's it's funny because you see on the menu they have some Underwood um, deviled ham omelet, and they have uh, you know Waverly Oaks apple crisp. So I think it's sort of a, a takeoff on local, and these might be local people. Like now, if, if they'd probably if you were painting a mural in Waverly, you'd put all the guys that hang out on Dunkin' Donuts or something. But, but this is probably some local faces or people who hung out at whatever this location was. But the mural is, is quite large. You can't miss this one if you're going along Trapello. I think the guy in green there by the money board, Arams. Yeah. Arams? Yeah, yeah it's okay. not there anymore. Okay, so you think that this is Arams, maybe? Well, or he is. Or he is. Yeah, maybe they... Yes, yeah, yeah. There's the several murals on that stretch uh, on the on the the building that you can see. So good. So people can recognize that. All right. What else do we have here? Okay, I'm hearing a consensus, growing consensus here. So this is kind of a. Uh, Yes, yeah, so this is a nod to the sort of the agri agricultural history of Belmont because you see this is the kind of uh, equipment that they'd use in a real hayloft to bring the bales up and put them away in the, in the fall months. But you're right, this is called, I think it's called Restoration Restore now. Yeah. And this is at the corner of Trapello, no sorry, Pleasant Street and Brighton Street. And the building that sits there, uh, at one time it was a blacksmith shop and then it was a carriage factory, and uh, now it's this uh, a program that helps, um, I think, uh, disabled, uh, yeah, dis disabilities, and there's a little uh, thrift and secondhand shop with this on the outside. So you gotta look up, down, around, everywhere to find out the answers to these mystery pictures. All right, another 
another marker prominently displayed around a main route in town? Anyone have any idea as to what we're looking at here? Ah, stumping people on this one. It's across from the fire department. Very good. Yes. VFW. VFW. <clears throat> this is in the front yard of the VFW. Across, um, she's saying across from the fire headquarters pretty much today. There's a VFW hall that sits there and out in the front they have some plantings and a little plaque. And this is affixed to to the uh, ground, I think, and there's some plaques beside. And this is a commemorative plaque honoring those that fought, and I think, in the Korean conflict. So that's, yeah, right along the route there in Waverly. OK. Cleaners. Cleaners, where? Where are cleaners where? Tell us. Yeah. Again, this is along Pleasant Street almost where Brighton Street intersects with it, and a little sparkle sign we threw in to see if you were paying attention to our local businesses, and you seem to be, so that's good. That's the cleaner. All right, this is a, another interesting. Yeah, go Grove Street. And this is, this is the original house, the steps, that led into the Reuben Richardson house, at one time stood in this location. And when the town subsequently bought parts of that land to, to, for a town park, they moved the house down the street. So the house got moved, which was an amazing undertaking, because it's a quite a big three-story magnificent house. But they couldn't, couldn't quite figure out how to move the steps, I guess, so they left them behind. So you see, this is the granite steps of the steps that lead to nowhere now, but they were actually the front entrance to the Reuben Richardson house, which is along Grove Street. So yes, and, and, and then the playground is behind this now. So when you get over there, you take a look and you'll see uh, Stairway to Heaven over there in, on Grove Street. So there's what, that's what we're calling that. All right, this, this again is on a main thoroughfare. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Say, say, it, say it loud, louder. Yes, the Nassau building on, on Concord Avenue, yes. So this is a, this building was uh, recently constructed on that site. They had a, a former smaller brick uh, building there that they demoed and, and when they rebuilt the building, it's quite a big glass, three story along the sidewalk on Concord Avenue and then this, and then this uh, monument appeared out front. So this is a, a beautiful uh, decorative piece that sitting in front of the glass windows out on Concord Avenue. So that's his work. OK, good. I, I should add that to my notes. Thank you. I, I will put that in there. OK. Is he a Belmontian? No, just a famous sculpture. sculptor. OK. Good to know. OK, later on, I'll put that in my, my note for this. But yeah, a beautiful piece outside there, very decorative. So along Concord Avenue. OK, hmm, hmm, now. <clears throat> Railroad bridge. OK, give yourself a big, a big points for that, because that's, that's, that's one that I, I, I cropped down to make it a little more interesting to see if you figure it out. So it's a, it's a it used to be a, uh, an actual car, you know, where cars could go from, from the Clark Street, from the Clark Estate out to Pleasant Street and Clark Hill. You could enter and exit. Anyone remember driving cars along, yeah, along that? Yeah, of course, from Pleasant Street. And so now they've, they've made it a pedestrian only bridge and they've uh, put, put a big cage over it and around it. So probably, you know, just to discourage anybody throwing anything on the tracks or whatever. But yeah, give yourself a, a good score for that because you see this, just the wire mesh of the bridge. OK. I didn't, recognize didn't recognize it. So you'll, you'll pay attention. All right, here now we're looking at something sort of a, 
a tragedy and in the, in the, in the recent tragedy that took place associated with this. Anybody know where we're looking at first before I tell the story? You have a guess? St. Joseph's. No, no, not St. Joseph's. But that's a good guess. They've been through a lot of changes at that site with statuary and signage and things. St. Luke's. Okay, St. Luke's up on Lexington Street. Okay, and this has a kind of an interesting little story associated with it. So up until recently, this platform, granite platform, held a, a, a statue of the, the Virgin Mary, the Holy, Holy Mary. And uh, in these, a lot of these storms we've been having, it's received some damage. And one of the, even one of the hands came off and, and, and they were sort of trying to repair it. And then I'm told that the whole thing sort of toppled over so that the statue itself came off the base and um, they, they took it away. And I, I don't know if they have plans to fix it or what, what the solution is, but uh, that, the other interesting part, of it, so you won't see it anymore, you see just the base. The other interesting story associated with this is this originally stood at Our Lady of Mercy Church down on Trapello Road. And this was an original statue. If you see old photographs of the Our Lady of Mercy, or maybe some of you have attended that church, be beside the main entrance, there was a, a little garden and a little uh, landscaped area with this statue standing there at that church. And I'm told that when they uh, made plans to abandon that site and, and demolish the church, they donated the statue to St. Luke's and moved it to the Lexington location. So, and now, who knows where they've moved it? But, but that's a, a base of a statue that, that no longer with us, but it's got an interesting history. Okay, and this should be familiar, I hope, to some of you. Yeah, on Mill Street. Mill Street, over on the Mill Street area, if you're driving down that, that uh, sort of pass through, you can see from the street a whole row of these uh, beehives. And they've, they've appeared somewhat recently. I don't know exactly how long they've several years, maybe a couple years. Uh, and there's another set that's further down at the end of Concord Avenue. But this, this set is uh, along Mill Street, part of Rock Meadow. So if you walk down in that area and along those pathways, this is in the Rock Meadow area, but closer to the street. You can you know, easily see it as you're driving down Mill Street. So good, you live in that area, more or less. So probably, yeah, familiar to you. All right, let's see what's coming. I don't know if they're getting harder or easier. <laughs> but this is a, this again is something I wouldn't say is a, has a long history. This is rather a new, uh, a new fixture in Belmont. Joey's Park, no, a good guess. Beach Street. So if you, if you leave the building here and you go now down to the corner um, where they've put in the pickleball courts and basketball and they've done a, a lot of a re refurbishing of that area on the town field, you will see new play, a whole new playground equipment uh, in that section of town. And, and so I thought it'd be fun to take some of the gym sets and the playground equipment and see how many of you have visited that playground. Yeah, so this is, this is sort of a springing up in the, in the new refurbished of the Grove Street area. Okay, this one, this one much more historic. This is not new, not new. I see a hand. Yeah, Concord Avenue, everybody. If you go along Concord Avenue, uh, yeah, with all the junk there, they'll what they're ripping down and tickets. This is a ticket booth window. If you've ever gone to a game or an event on the fields at the high school, you probably pass through there and you sell the tickets at this booth. So this is the ticket window. I don't know what they've got in there, storage now. And this is something that they didn't rip down or re-renovate. Re re so it's still standing along the fence, qu quite close to the street, 
right before, in behind it is the football field area. So this, yeah, good for you, seeing the ticket booth. Okay, yeah. This is really historic because this is before cell phones, everybody. So that must be 100 years old. Yeah, yeah, so this is, this is amazingly, uh, it, this is a real dinosaur, still standing there. I have no idea why or who owns it or what, what's the status of it or what, 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 what to do about it or with it. But there you go, there's an old part of a phone booth. Imagine that, where you could make a call walking down the street and stop at a phone booth and make a call. So somebody, did somebody say the location? Post office. This is another one at the Belmont Post Office main branch in Belmont Center. And this is standing close to the main entrance, sitting there in the landscaping every year as they're growing, you know, flowers and different things. And, and, and you, you turn and you look at the uh, old phone booth fixtures. Who knew? So that's a, that's a, that's a historic it's look at. Upright. Yes, upright. Okay, so somebody lives in the, down in this area. This is a familiar. Crate Escape, yes, down in Brighton Street, where Brighton Street comes along by the railroad tracks, down where uh, Cambridge Plating, Plating Company is, right across from the Hill Estates in that section of town. If you go down there, very prominent displayed is the Blue Dog. And there it is advertising Crate Escape, which is a, a sort of a doggy daycare and spa, I guess you could describe it as. And that's uh, sitting out along the road there to advertise yeah, that business. Great, doing great. Okay, here's another uh, architectural detail. Belmont Light. So the old Belmont Light, we should say. So in other words, this is along Concord Avenue as well. It sits next to the police station, uh, the, the building there that's been abandoned for uh, I don't know, for quite some time. And this is a crop detail of the front archway with dental molding, very beautiful sort of a, a detail of that, that uh, building that doesn't look quite as glamorous as the pictures making it look even, but that was the old headquarters of the Belmont Light Department for many years. Before that, it was Adam's store. So real, real ancient history, but there's, there's where it sits, taking a look at that. Okay, another one that should be familiar, I hope. Yes, what are we thinking? Yeah, town hall. I heard many of you saying town hall. Any idea what it, what? Yeah, it's a can. So it's where, where uh, yeah, this is, this is part of the world, I'm sorry. This is part of the Civil War, yeah. Civil War monument that's affixed at the town hall. The main entrance, which we don't use anymore, the one that actually is along Concord Avenue, that for many years was uh, the way you would exit, formally exit and enter the building. And they used uh, th that main entrance. And this sits along there on the, the beautiful brick work that's along that area. And they have a plaque that also commemorates the men who died in the Civil War year in Belmont. Names listed here as well, but there you're taking a look at the, the, the town hall uh, location. Okay, is another, another good one. Yeah, yeah, speak up. Tunnel under the tracks, I heard, yes. So, so this is a tunnel that connects the Belmont Center to sort of uh, the, the, the World War I Delta on Common Street, connects basically Concord Avenue to Common Street. So if you use a commuter rail at all, you see there's a little tunnel that you can walk through to get from one side to the other, one side of the tracks to the other without crossing on top. And it's been the canvas for many artists, I, I would assume graffiti specialists from Belmont for many years. And sometimes they'll go and paint it all out and uh, clear it up and then Sooner or later, it will, it will be redecorated with the next round of, of creative um, sort of graffiti. So that's all in that tunnel 
that you walk through connecting, like I said, one side of the tracks to the other in Concord Avenue. So good for you, they recognize uh, that location. Okay, another, another interesting. Yes, I heard the, yeah. This is Clay Pit Pond where, uh, where it's the water from Wellington Brook is being discharged into Clay Pit Pond. So this is, this is out along Concord Avenue uh, and this is how the water actually flows. I think it starts uh, in Waverly section of town and it flows through many, many drainage areas and it, and it makes its way behind um, the Armenian, uh, the, sorry, the Unitarian Church, the Armenian Church. It goes underground by the, the Underwood Pool and Playground. So it's open behind the library. This is the same brook. And then the outlet carries the water and it goes underground through, through that section of town, it comes out into Clay Pit Pond. So you're looking at how it, where it discharges out into the Clay Pit. So that's, yeah, that's uh, along Concord Avenue. All right, so that's the first half. I was gonna give everybody a chance to sort of turn over their answer sheet and take a deep breath. And at the same time, tell, take a little pause to thank some people who made the mystery show possible. And uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank Eddie Lohm, who's here today. And Eddie is a, a great photographer and uh, does an outstanding job with that, that, that craft and really is an artist. And he uh, contributed many of these pictures that you're seeing in his walks about town. Uh, was able to compile some uh, wonderful images and I was telling him before the show, don't be disappointed because uh, what they started out as and what you might see in the screen might be a little shocking because he gave you too much background and I thought that it would make the show too easy. So I edited them and cropped them and made them a little bit more uh, challenging for you. But the actual real um, full picture is usually beautiful photography work. So he's, he's here today and doing that. And of course, I have a collection of my own that I go around town and accumulate different um, pictures that are in our files. So that all happens. I mix them together and so these photos could be you know, added and, and put together so that we could, we could view them. And so how many of you are seeing Belmont in sort of a different way? I mean, you, you have to admit that most of these images, when, when, you, when we reveal what they are, you've probably all walked by them, driven by them, seen them, are familiar with them, but just don't realize. So that was sort of the way that the mystery photo contest got popular. And just another little sidebar. Um, it got really, I think in those years when it was starting out, very competitive. And the people that would send in their answers every week uh, and were published names, it got to be like a little competition between all those folks. And they would like drive around town and, <laughs> and, and scour the highways and, and they took it seriously to, to make sure they got their answers in on the deadline because they didn't want to lose any points and be the one that didn't didn't get the right answer. So it was kind of a, a fun uh, little way that the paper, I think the idea was a fun one because it gets people looking and talking about the town that they live in and noticing and appreciating the landmarks that are all around us. So in that way, it was, a, it was from that 1981 till about 93, and it was all done by the Belmont Citizen. So yeah, so it was a, it was a great little series. So that was a, a fun way, the mystery photo. So are you ready to do the next little half of the show? Okay, you're doing pretty well. So there, we're taking a look at... Somebody, somebody answer this for something else. This is Joey's Park. So this is along Cross Street. And this is a playground that was built and then rebuilt for Joey O'Donnell, who was a, a boy that died of cystic fibrosis many years ago. And, and uh, so that they got together and built a little playground in his honor. It's been very, this is a very popular play park. So I figured that most of you would, uh, would, would know, take a little glimpse or recognize some of the equ equipment from that, that one. All right, here's another. Okay, what do we think? Yeah, people are saying up by the cemetery, but it's not that far up. 
police station. Yeah, this is on the police station. So in the center of town, Belmont Police Station, if you look up and you'll, you'll, you'll see this is probably a big communication system or whatever to help them transmit or whatever. So this is just on Concord Avenue and Pleasant Street, the corner there. Take a look. Uh, next time you're in the area, you'll see this big aerial kind of antenna. It's still being used. Or not? Uh, yeah. Used? Yes. Who doesn't know that? Mr. Obvious has the answer, but anybody else? Let's, let's see if anybody else. Uh... The yellow is a good hint. Yeah, the yellow is a good hint. And this is, very, this is very highly visible building. This is a detail from a very highly visible building. You probably all go by this several times a day, and it is. Wellington Hill Station, yes. So this is the uh, octagonal building set right when you come under the underpass. You're looking at Wellington Hill Station there. And it was uh, used uh, formerly, it was built as a private schoolhouse and then formerly used as a train station and, and uh, has a real long and interesting history. It's owned by the Historical Society, maintained by us. And it's quite an interesting architectural piece that's really the centerpiece of that. that, that yeah, the, the, the downtown area is this Wellington Hill Station. And this is one of the details off of off the shutters that appear above the windows. So next time you go back past this building, you'll take a look at the, the green shuttering that goes above the windows of the Wellington Hill Station. So what's the date of that? 1840s. Somerset You're saying Somerset Street? No, no, not Somerset. Nope. That's a good guess, but no, no. Yeah, we're getting closer. <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting the right neighborhood now. We're, it's up by Beaver Brook. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is up by Rock Meadows. Specifically, though, this is in and behind the McLean Barn. You know the barn that sits along Mill Street, the one that's been sort of in the news more recently that they're doing some renovations and upgrades and they're doing a big study as to what, what to use. That was part of the McLean Farm at one time. It's a brick building. It's set quite, quite far back from the street and in behind that. So if you go down the little um, driveway that brings you into Rock Meadow and you get out of your car there and take a look to one side, you'll see this is the old fencing area in and behind that. So it may have been left over from some farming um, when, the, when the land was used for some farming purposes. But there it is. That's uh, in behind the, the rock meadow area. Ah. Concord Avenue, yes, exactly. Now, does it look familiar? Starting to look familiar? No. Nope. Okay, so if you're standing at the phone booth and then you walk by the bird bath that we saw, then you go by the post office and you go down to where that used to be at the flower shop, you know, for a long time. This, this sits right before you go under the underpass. So right after the flower shop, well, you make the corner to go under the underpass and that building there, it's now an optical store, yeah. Belmont uh, Good Eyes or something, good something, looks. okay, Good Looks. So this sits outside just along the side there. And I think it was probably left from the area, era when it was a flower shop. I think they used to decorate and do a little landscaping out there on the side of the building. But there you see the little wishing well that you can walk past. I think most of you, you gotta get out on Concord Avenue. You're missing all, this, <laughs> missing all this stuff. Yeah, along that, just along that little strip on Concord Avenue. Lots of, I know. And you go that by there many times, but who knew, right? So now we're, we're showing the, why they're mystery photos. Okay, here's another interesting little, little mystery photo that take a look at. What are we thinking of this? There you go, bingo. Okay, fire department. A fire station on Leonard Street. 
So if you're going on um, Alexander Avenue, uh, and, and you, you're, you're, go, you're turned down Alexander, so not on the Main Street, not on Leonard Street, if you turn down Alexander Avenue, of course, behind the station, there's that little parking lot, and there's, of course, um, the dead end street that, that ends there. And uh, this, is the, this is the door that they access, that, that I'm sure that the fire personnel go in and out of the building. So this is the, the, the I, I gotta say, main entrance for probably the employee or the firemen themselves that go, because the parking lot is right, right in front of this. So now you recognize what I'm talking about? So the, the back door of the fire station on Leonard Street and the little overhang Okay, there we go. This one should be familiar. This should be familiar. Yeah, you're doing great. So this one, uh, this one should be familiar. Yes? Yes, yeah. So the town delta, where she's describing, is in front of the M&T Savings Bank, and there's that uh, green space there. And uh, this time capsule was buried it's in a vault, it's about, I think, 12 feet underground in a series of vaulting. And this was part of the bicentennial celebration for the town. And they collected items during, during those years. And this was, I think, the last uh, act of the committee was to enclose this vault and bury it. And so you see, 20, 2076, we got a ways to go. But at that time, they'll be opening it up and, and see what life was like uh, formerly in Belmont. So this is, this is a marker that just sits flush with the grass out, out on that delta, and that's where it's buried. So it's marking the, the time capsule that's, that's put in the ground there. Another interesting architectural, beautiful architectural, um, and this is a r rather signature location. This is a real prominent local landmark. Not not train, but good guess. School, somebody said no. No, but this is a Lions Club, no. No. No Lions Club, but you're on the right track. It's a town building. That's a pretty that's a pretty big hint. Town Hall. This is a Belmont Town Hall. And again, it seems unfamiliar because this used to be the front door of the building where you entered and exit through the um, the main the you know at the at the along the Concord Avenue side. And uh, this is where the Civil War Memorial sits. If you look above that, and uh, at one time, a lot of uh, town meetings were held there, dramatic club performances all held in the town hall, in the auditorium. So if you're exiting and entering the auditorium and you looked up, you'll see this beautiful restore, I mean, beautiful woodwork and the arch, archways above that. Um, this is exterior, exterior of the town hall. It's such beautiful architectural detail and the lights that hang there. So. Take a look next time if you're in that area. It's a, it, the town hall is a beautiful signature building at any rate, but this is a view you don't usually see. So that's why we, we put it in the mystery picture. Another architectural detail from a pretty, pretty prominent building around town. And you're looking at a beautiful stained glass. Library, I heard. All, all Benton Library. No, they had a beautiful stained glass window. I heard somebody over here. First Church. First Church. Yes. So this is right on Concord Avenue. Might as well just have the whole tour on Concord Avenue, I guess. <laughs> just walk down to the post office and you can look at this one. And this is a stained glass and it's on part of a curved, uh, the front face, um, not the new section, of course. This, is, this building was built uh, out of field stones that were gathered by congregants. And it was, it was, put, it was built as a, as a stone building because the first church, the wooden structure, burned down. 
So I guess to prevent that or to, to make that more difficult, when they rebuilt it, they, they positioned it across the street and they built it out of field stone. So this is, this is a, one of the windows that, that goes in the curved, almost rounded portion of the front and that's at the first church. So good, good for you that somebody knew that. A couple of you knew that. Yeah, a lot of architectural details here. Yes, yes. Everyone recognize this now? Yeah, we know what we're talking about. This is a, the only part of Belmont that's owned by Cambridge, basically. So this is, a, this is all landlocked and it's part of, a, you know, surrounded by Belmont, but the, the actual reservoir is owned by the city of Cambridge. And that sits in the Payson Park area and it's up a little bit on a rise, and you can walk and take a walk around there. And I'm told that these buildings at one time were built with, um, people would come out from the city and come out from the different towns to come to this area and take a walk. And there used to be an open walkway that would go around these, th th these uh, circular buildings, and you could actually stroll around and, and view the city. And, and you have a pretty spectacular view from that location and at that height. I don't know if anybody's had done that in the past or is, is familiar with that. But yes, some of you are nodding. But this is where th th this building is a pa Payson Park okay. Reservoir. Where is that? Where is, what is it called? Payson Park Reservoir. Okay. So it's up on the hillside, up, up. Uh, oh, with the big round. Yes, it's yeah. Stages. And this is a Cambridge water supply, yes. Yeah. Yes, there's still water. It's covered now. Originally it was open. Now it's covered. Yeah. Basically the standpipe for water pressure for the city. Yes. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a it's a working uh, part of their water system for the city of Cambridge in Belmont. Okay. This is a little a little more obscure. But there's a couple of you in the crowd that live in this area. It's in the Winbrook area. Debbie, go ahead, tell us. He's a beekeeper and a sculptor and a kind of interesting character. He lives off of Cross Street. And his yard is filled with um, metal work and sculptures and, and different. Uh, and he lives on the corner of. Yeah, Wynn maybe. Yeah, Wynn and Claflin it could be. So if you're in that neighborhood, take a little detour and you'll see um, he has many different, I don't know, there's a big giant bird and there's some metal, um, all different kinds of um, free form art things. And yeah, this is one of them. So good for you that knew, you got to live in that neighborhood to figure out, but that's a, off of, off of, off of Wynn Street. Okay, Here's, this is not so vague. This is in a pretty prominent location. Yes, Payson Park Church. So if you walk up to Payson Park Church, on, there's a little side platform in a granite area, and they have this bell, a commemorative bell there, and that was dedicated and donated to the church, I think in the 20s, by uh, Benton, Colonel, Colonel Benton, who was, uh, and uh, I don't know the exact significance of it, in particular, but it's, it's on display, prominently displayed as part of their uh, front landscaping uh, side of the Payson Park Church. Okay, another one. Yeah, a few of you, few of you pay, I guess, walk around looking up, because this actually is, like you're saying, on the same delta, where the, where the uh, time capsule is, they put a clock there on the end of the delta, and this was donated by the branch of Belmont Savings Bank. They have a charitable foundation, and I think they um, put forth the money and, and design and whatever to install this, what we're calling now the town clock, although the real town clock is at the Unitarian Church. But this one they put in the center, and if you look up on that face, You'll see this is a little decorative way. It's trimmed at the top. And so this is another rather, I say, newish addition to Belmont Center. Not really very historic, but, but very prominent. You probably walk by this and drive by this all the time as well. 
Okay, another interesting steps to nowhere, but yeah. There you go. Yeah, everyone recognize this location? So he's talking about the William Flagg Homer House, which is across from the town hall along Pleasant Street, if you're walking or driving in that route. And it's a, uh, now it's the headquarters of the Belmont Women's Club. And their driveway, and these granite steps, I don't know if they once were in a different location or, or made a pathway that goes up. It's a rather steep hill, you know, to get up into the building. And these are now set by the driveway, and they are v very prominently visible along Pleasant Street as part of that that historic property. So that's the William, William Flagg Homer House, Belmont Women's Club. Okay, if you could put, I'll put in another bell. Yes, yes, the chief knows, of course. <laughs> the chief knows. This is at the fire headquarters, yes. And so this bill, bell was set out there again, probably recently, I mean in the recent history, and it was, I think, originally part of the uh, Waverly Station. I think at one time hung, believe it or not, you know where the um, Daniel Butler School, the old, the temporary fire headquarters, you know the building I'm talking about that's, that's along Trapello Road over in Waverly. I'm pretty sure that this bell was part of that station at one time, and then it got um, taken out of that and saved, and then recently they decided to, to display this outdoors, and I'm pretty sure they have a little write-up about the history of it um, in the fire station building. It might be inside the door, but that, yeah, good for you. The, the, so this is a fire, say, fire headquarters on Trapello Road. All right. Okay. I'm making them too easy, I see, for this group. Yeah, this is at the town hall. So when you drive in the, drive in the um, entranceway now to the town hall and you're going to go to the, any of those buildings, uh, the, the annex or the town hall building or the, the library, this, this is, sits along the, the pathway that drives the, the entranceway of the town hall. And it's probably set there by the Veterans Association, although I, I can't say the history. And you can retire your flag. Um, responsibly in that. I put this in just because uh, I thought it'd be kind of a fun little, um, fun little, uh, you know, reminder of the Belmont Historical Society's Wellington Hill Station. We see that it's depicting in the railroad. And this is a prominently part of the display. The top of Belmont Books, and I think it's called Wellington Brown Bear Cafe, Bruno Cafe, something like that. Bruno Ca Brown Bear Cafe, Wellington Books. Now you know what I mean on Leonard Street. One of the one of the buildings, uh, one of the one of the businesses that's there, has adopted this kind of a logo and has it set above their doorway into their the entrance into their shop. So they've decided to, you know, celebrate our local history by using that. Uh, display or that, that, that uh, detail above their door. So that's kind of a fun one. Another, another popular business. Moosey's. Moosey's, yes. And this is over our cars on Trapello Road. Formerly Old Brigham's. The Old Brigham's. If we were really, yes, really into the history, many of you, I'm sure, visited much more regularly when it was a Brigham's and yes, a Brigham's shop over there. Now it's been taken over by a local business and it's the cow, the cow symbol. Okay, here we have another monument to look at. Yeah, yes, yes. I hear by the school department, by the town hall, yes. Part of the town hall complex and this monument sits sort of adjacent to what is the school administration building along Pleasant Street. And again, that, uh, that area where the town hall sits historically was the homestead and tavern of the Wellington family. Colonel Jaduthan Wellington had a large 
Homestead and Tavern there. It was raised and the town hall was built on that site. So this sort of commemorates the Wellington family and their homestead and this marker sits there talking about the history. They're the early settlers of the town and lived there through many generations. Yes, yes. You were talking about, yes, that's a good point. This scene, that, that Wellington Tavern that we're talking about, was depicted on a rather, rather large wall mural painted by local artist Nelson Chase. And yes, it's in the custody of the Belmont Historical Society. And it's waiting to be hopefully reinstalled in the new space, at the, at the, at the new library. But yes, so that's what we're talking about. Yes, uh, but, well, Wellington, yes. Yes, yes. This is a uh, many uh, family stories about the site and location. One of which is this is kind of a little sidebar. Is you understand how steep a hill uh, Concord Avenue is to get to get. It was laid out in a straight line, straight line mania for some reason. It goes up over the hill. So the, the colonel used to keep a a pair of oxen at this location to help pull the stagecoaches up over that hill because they couldn't make the grade fully loaded. And now you see since they've redirected Concord Avenue and Center Avenue goes up the hill, but Concord Avenue sort of dips and turns around with a more, more uh, I guess, agreeable layout for that kind of transportation. But yes, so you're right. This is a very prominent location in town. OK, another little. Any guesses on this one? Oh, there we go. She's saying part of the Tudor block on Trapello Road. Winter's Hardware, yeah. So you see the, the sort of the hardware sign. And you so, uh, so if you looked at your flyer, we show the Tudor block as one of the uh, mystery photo contests, but that was too easy, so I switched here to the, the signage on the end cap. But this, this building was, uh, yes, in Cushing Square, very, very prominent, very uh, popular, and, and was there for many, many years until, up until pretty recently when it was sold out of the Winters family. I heard it was coming down. Yeah, we, we, I don't know that, but yes. Okay, this is another... Another interesting mystery photo. Yeah. Everybody hear that? Farms, farms. This is a this is a shout out to our last working farm in Belmont. And if you were with us earlier, we took a tour of this this farm uh, over on Glen Road and uh, that area which was uh, about nine acres now. It's in a perpetual farm, restricted, cultivated land, uh, you know, grants so that it, it, it has to remain agricultural. And they still farm this plot of land that was from the Hill Richardson family that dates back to the 1600s and was a part of a land grant from King Charles I. So this is the last part of that. And this is the entrance gate off of Glen Road when you go into that farm area. So good for you that know the the farm history. Lions Club. Lions Club, good. Yeah, this is again, this is another interesting building. It was used as a train station, built as a train station. You know that in Belmont Center, if you can imagine, there isn't enough congestion in the underpass. <clears throat> At one time, there were two sets of tracks, and they ran at street level. So can you imagine today if we had that dilemma? But uh, at one time, they took up a set of tracks, and they raised and elevated this set. So it now goes over, over the, so we have the underpass, and it, it's raised there at the grade, so it's above street level. Um, and this building was built at that time, in the 1900s, 1907 and 8. And again, this was built out of field stones that were hauled off of Belmont Hill up on the Chenery Farm which is at the top of the hill there where the cemetery is. And all those stones came down the hill with, a, with, with horse 
delivering them to this site, and it was built into a railroad station. So you're looking at the stone architecture. It's owned by the Lions Club since about 1968, and uh, they, they maintain it as their clubhouse. Ooh. That's on Waverly Square. Where? Waverly Square. Yeah. Waverly Square. Well, that wasn't too hard because I put it right after the one in Belmont Center. Again, this is a situation in Waverly Square where the tracks cross the street at grade level, at street level in several locations, which they decided was much too dangerous. And so, again, they lowered now, they lowered the grade there, and now it's, it's, it's sub-street level that you have to walk down into the commuter rail. So they probably did this project, which I'm assuming around 1952. So this, this uh, stone commemorates that bridge area. So this is right next to the car wash in that area there. And you can see the, the, the date etched into the bridge. So that probably was when they completed that project. Okay. Alexander Avenue, yes. Yes, so this building is, again, has a very interesting history. It's part of the Metropolitan Water uh, Division and it's a pumping station. So, you know, our water comes from Quabbin and, and gets here through a, a series of pipes and, and, and uh, routes and through different towns and it comes into Belmont at different locations. I think it comes through Waltham, comes in, and this station is a working pumping station and it, uh, lifts up, brings the water up to different, depending on the elevation of where you live in Belmont, uh, this, this is probably where your water is pumped up from. So this building is, is sitting along Alexander Avenue. And then we're ending with the, uh, another whole round of these painted uh, traffic signal boxes. Because two wasn't enough. I'm giving you another chance to do another set of them here. So don't mess this up. Here we go. Where's this one? Next one. This is in progress. We have the gal. The artist is actually doing the painting in this one. No one knows this one. Yeah. Okay. So yes. So well, well. So. So yeah. Let's let's start again. Let's start again. This one here. Somebody said. Yeah. This is. If you went with us in a recent, we had a little walk on the Pleasant Street Historic District, and we uh, went and saw the houses there with the Fletcher and uh, Stephen Frost. This. If you come to, out of Leonard Street, this actually sits in front of the Sergeant House, which is a historic house. Right, uh, so it's right at the intersection of Leonard Street and Pleasant Street. The, the Swan Box. This one, anyone come up with the idea for this one? Oh, this one you all should know. All should know. Okay, I'll give you a minute. And the third one. Trapello. Trapello Road, yes. And it's, if you were, you know where Palfrey Square is? So that block of shops that used to be the sign of Palfrey Square. And so that, like, is it Harriet Avenue there? And, and, and uh, Trapello Road. And this one sits along Trapello Road. So the, the, the final one. Oh, come on, guys. It's on Concord Avenue. Well, well wait a minute, wait a minute, sorry. It's on the corner of Concord Avenue and Pleasant Street. No. Yeah. This is sitting in the, in the front yard of the town hall, across from the police station. So I can't. No, this is, this is the first one, I think, in the series. So if you're standing anywhere in that area, 
police station town, if you're anywhere in that, that, that area, this is, the, this is sort of sit, sitting out in the roadway there. Uh, they probably controls the signal lights right at that intersection. Pl so, so the Belmont Women's Club, the town hall, the police station, all in that area, probably all controlled by the, by the box that sits under this design. So that's, that's in the town hall. So I, yeah, see, Belmont Art Association is, is responsible for decorating these around town. Yeah. Okay, and so I think that's probably good conclusion to our mystery photo contest. So I, I want to say that uh, you did pretty good. You, you did pretty. You did pretty well at uh, coming up with these locations. You're pretty observant. But uh, if you have any, uh, send your own mystery photos, and you want to send some in to us. Please remember to do that, and we could have another a future show of, of uh, sort of things that you come up with or in your neighborhood, around town, uh, obvious, obscure. I think we had some of each category, but you can always send them in to us through email, and we'll make a little collection, and hopefully that would be interesting. So remember to, to look around and, and, and enjoy the town of Belmont and all these mystery photos, and thank you so much.